Hi everyone, this is Sarah B. Hansen. I am sharing today how I pack for travel, either travel abroad, travel teaching workshops, um, traveling to you know the coast or another state, or even backpacking or kayaking. Uh, it's all basically the same in my book. The main idea is to have everything be uh, somewhat compact and um, easy to put into a bag and, you know, not difficult, not, you don't have a lot of extra supplies is what I'm trying to say. So, so I'm going to go through and show you all the things that I take and then I'll show you how I fit them into my bag. The important supplies that we need when we are going backpacking or traveling abroad for watercolor, we need paper, we need paint, we need brushes, and we might need a marker, a pen, or something like that. We need um, a water container and, um, and perhaps a pencil, perhaps a ruler. So I'll tell you, I'll talk to you a little bit about how I break down those, those items and what I take with me and what I recommend you taking if you're going on a workshop with me or if you're just packing to go backpack. So the first item I would like to go over a little bit is watercolor paper. I like to use this journal here, it's called a moleskin journal. And um, um, this is fairly old, I used to order them a lot and I have this one which I haven't um, used all of it up and I haven't ordered a new book for a long time. I understand that their paper may not be the quality it used to be. So I've recently been looking into other paper and I'll show you some of those choices. But this is nice because it has a rubber band feature around the end so that when you're traveling it doesn't, the papers don't get crunched up and it works quite nice. I like the size of it. This is about a, a five by eight, I believe, or maybe five by seven. Um, since those are somewhat problematic now as far as the paper goes, I've tried a couple of new um, watercolor journals. This is called The Perfect Sketchbook. And by the way, I'm not getting paid for any of this, so I'm not sponsoring anything. So you, you just, you know, take my word for it. I've tried these. Nobody's paying me. Um, this is called The Perfect Sketchbook by Etcher, E-T-C-H-R. And it's an A5 format. And I love the paper on this one. Uh, it's 140 pound cold press, very stiff, very nice, and a lovely texture. It has a little bookmark that you can use, and it um, it has a little pocket in the back, and it also has that wonderful rubber band around the surface, around the end of it, so it keeps things nice and tidy. It's about the same size, um, 8.9 by 5.9 inches. That's a great, great journal. I love it. It's a little bit expensive, so if you don't want to spend quite that much money, um, I would recommend using the Pentallic Aqua. This is also great. It's a watercolor paper. It's 48 pages, five by eight, and it's 140 pound watercolor paper. The colors weren't quite as intense on this one as the other one, as the Escher one, um, but still it was quite good. And the paper is nice and heavy. Um, it just has a little bit of an interesting texture on it that I'm not super fond of, but it works well. And it, it's great for the, for the price. I also like the fact that it has a pen holder up here, a pencil holder, and it has a little bookmark on the end and it has a rubber band around this end too. So these are great if you're hiking, backpacking, kayaking, um, or even going to one of my workshops. One of my workshops too, I really recommend, if you can, even in addition to the journal, to um, get something like this or about this size. Um, I like these Arches watercolor pads. Uh, they come with the end is all glued, and so when you're painting on it, it's a block or a pad, when you're painting on it, the paper doesn't warp with the water um, that you're adding with your paints. And uh, when you're done painting, you simply just remove the top piece of watercolor paper off of there, and then you've got a brand new piece of watercolor paper on the bottom. There's 20 sheets in this, I believe. And so this is a, this is a wonderful thing to take when you're going um, doing one of my workshops. I will be taking probably two of these along with the journal when I'm teaching, but that's because I go through a lot of paper. The other thing you can do is simply cut a bunch of paper up to whatever size and take a stiff board on which to tape the paper. And in that case, you might wanna take some tape or some binder clips and it works great. Um, you can just slip those extra pieces of paper um, in a little notepad or a little folder or something like that and take them um, loosely. So that works well. One thing I would recommend um, is the binder clips are great for, say, journaling or 
anything like that. It's nice to kind of put that binder clip on. Whoops, if I do it right. If the wind's blowing, it's nice to have a binder clip to slip on the outside edge, uh, you know, to kind of keep the wind from flapping the papers around. So it's nice to have a couple of these. So that kind of does it for paper. Those are great little paper options that you're, you know, I recommend using. Okay, so the next question becomes then, how do you take paint? So um, basically, let me show you what I have. This is, this is my hiking. You're, you're gonna see it's really a mess. I know that it's a huge mess. In fact, it's been so painted that the lid gets stuck. Look at that, um, but I love it. Um, I got this at an estate sale. It's a Cinele um, palette box for watercolors. Um, I enjoy it because it's got mixing tray here. It's got a place for a small paintbrush. And what I love most about it, quite frankly, is these um, little cubes in here. So I've got another video on my online um, YouTube channel that you can take a look at on how to pop these cubes out and replace with your own paint. Um, because these cubes can pop out, you can order new cubes and basically like this. Um, or you might have a paint box that comes with pre-formed cake, cake pans. And if you don't like that color, you can pop them out and replace them. So you can order these on Amazon. And um, so I order, I have quite a little bag of them and I can pop these out anytime. I can squeeze my favorite colors into the paint tube paint cubes, stick them back in there, let them dry overnight, and then you can take them, just let, let them dry overnight or a few days, and you can fold this up and take this right into your carry-on bags. Um, this is also another one that I use. It's a little bit smaller and more compact, but it still has those same paint cubes in here. Uh, paint pans, paint cubes, I don't know what they're called, but they're little cubes to me, and they pop right out, and um, and they're also contained by a little uh, a little metal piece in here. So it has mixing trays, and if these mixing trays beat up on you a lot when you, when you buy a brand new one of these, just take some sandpaper and sand them down, scratch the surface a little bit, and then your paint will um, not beat up quite so much on that. So this is also a great palette box to take, something like this. You can order these on Amazon. There's so many varieties. Um, I like this one. I'm not sure where I got it, but I think it was probably Amazon. Um, so that's the way to deal with your paint. If you're like me and you use a lot of extra paint, I might um, throw a bag of paint in my check-on luggage and um, just have extra paint of the paint that I need for teaching. And it's usually specific paint. I won't take this many paint, this many tubes of paint by any means, but I might take my red that I use all the time, my yellow and my blue that I use all the time, and of course, quinacridone burnt orange. So I might take some extras because like I said, when I'm teaching, I go through a lot of paint and I probably will use one of these tubes up or half of one in like um, about a week, so seven days. So so that's kind of an idea about your paint. All right, now this is a fairly easy one. Brushes and pencils and pens um, and maybe a ruler. So um, I like to buy, this is a, a nice little brush that I purchased, it's an Escada. Um, and I love it because you can pop off the end and simply slide your um, brush into the end. It's got a little hole here for, um, so that it doesn't uh, get moldy inside there and it protects the tip. This is really nice for travel and I just take one brush, that's all it is. And I think this, yeah, this is a number eight round. So I just take that one brush and that's all I need. If you want to take other brushes, like let's say you have a few brushes that you really love, I like to rubber band the brushes around something like a ruler or perhaps a chopstick or a dowel. And what you wanna do is rubber band it nice and tight, pass the tip of the brush and put it into like a toothbrush container from like the dollar store or something and um, drop it in there. Make sure it's not too long for the toothbrush container. You might have to saw off your paintbrush or, um, you know, or just make sure your toothbrush container is long enough or build something on your own. But in any case, you wanna have something past your brushes so that your brush tip doesn't end, make, meet the end and get crumpled. Um, so I like to use a ruler or perhaps a pencil or a pen and, and rubber band it around the brush so that end is protected if you don't have a, a special travel brush. 
there's a lot of travel brushes on the market. So, you know, you can find a lot. Of, I like the sable ones. Make sure to grab some kind of a pencil. I like to have a pencil of some type. I don't care what kind. And then I always take a Sharpie or some kind of, this is an ultra fine point, or some kind of a permanent marker um, or a couple of markers, just depending on how you paint and what you want the effects your marker to have. All right, now for water container. This I purchased, um, I believe at Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama, I'm not sure, um, but it is a collapsible water container. It's very light. It can pop all the way out and hold a lot of water, or you can collapse it up and put a little bit of water in it. It comes with a sponge. Um, of course, you can always you know, get your own sponge um, but uh, and cut it up and put it in there. It's nice to have a little sponge. And, but this is nice because it folds up very flat. It's very lightweight and works well for travel. Now, what's nice is to take all of these supplies that you have and be able to fit them into one bag. Um, this is a great bag I purchased, um, I believe again on Amazon. I live out in the rural <laughs> area, so I don't have good access to any stores. This is a food storage bag and it's a Ziploc bag. There's also all kinds of bags out there that have zippers and containers. Just make sure that the correct size and make sure your, all of your supplies will fit in there. Whatever type of paper you have can slide right into this size here. I want to put my palette in there and usually I will actually use a Ziploc bag to put my palette into before placing it inside this because these things leak and I, I paint very wet and sloppily so uh, it's nice to have that contained within a bag slip it in there so that it doesn't get the paper wet in the notebook and then you can put your water container in there and then I like to put my brushes and my pencil my pens and just slip all of this in here. And then I like to, oops, a binder clip goes in too. And then I love to um, put these little silica gel um, water absorption packets into the, into the bag because that will help dry up some of the paint and some of the, keep things from molding. Um, I put two or three in the bag and they're usually from like shoes or um, vitamins, things like that, and they absorb moisture. Ziploc the bag, and there you've got your whole entire watercolor supplies in a very nice, easy to use bag. If you are taking extra paper, you can simply, or tracing paper, you can simply just pack all that together, and it still is a nice, easy bag to carry in the airport, or camping, or traveling, or any of those things. So. Happy painting, folks. See you soon.